Alfred Hitchcock Presents will return next week. Now, terrorists attack America under siege. A world movie premiere. An issue everyone must face. What if international terrorists attacked America? What the hell is happening here? civilian dead? How many women and children? Where do you hide? How do you fight back? Retaliate swiftly, massively. Peter Strauss caught between Washington and a nightmare. Don't intend to let politics interfere with what I have to do. E.G. Marshall, the hawk who wants revenge. See, you should be the strongest military power in the world if we're afraid to use it. Paul Winfield, will he fall prey to a sea of hatred? We run the risk of engaging in tactics that will destroy what we are. Hal Holbrook may end the panic at any cost. Maybe the only way to fight terrorism is to become terrorists ourselves. Let's hope it never happens. I'm now with you, Allah. Don't do this. America under siege.
I cannot tell you how much fun it's been. <laughs> Warren, wait. It's very important. Uh, you uh, forgot your fish. Chicken is too young to travel. <laughs> you can't leave now. It's your turn to do the dishes. Throw them away. <laughs> Two days away from civilization is about all I can take. Think how healthy it's been for you, all the vegetables and the fish. Gloria, and... you're a wonderful hostess, and I'm very fond of you. But sitting in a boat for two days without a newspaper or a martini <laughs> and waiting for a fish to bite a worm is not my idea of fun. We'll call you when we get back to Washington. You better hurry up or you're going to miss the last shuttle. Ah! <laughs> Come on, I'll help you clean up. I have a better idea. Let's go for a walk. Okay. Bureau seems a million miles away. Too quiet for you? Mm-hmm. It's too good for me. You know what I think's missing? Mm-hmm. A couple of kids running around. You think we should try again? Kathy told me about this attorney in Washington who specializes in adoption. What are you saying? You want to adopt? Is that okay? Is that okay? Is that okay? <gasps> oh, no. I think the Bureau just closed the distance. Sir? My God. How many casualties? 200 and counting. That's where Peter is. Who? Dan Murphy's kid. He's stationed there. The chopper can take us right to headquarters. I'll be right there. Don't worry about me. I'll close up the cabin and get a plane back. You'll never get out tonight. Stay overnight in Boston and fly up first thing in the morning. Call Dan and Kathy the moment you get back. I will. I love you. I love you too. It's a terrific idea!
McPhee, are you getting pictures? We need pictures, McPhee. We need pictures. McPhee, you get down there and get me some close-ups. gentlemen we all knew they'd eventually hit us at home and now they have what i want to know is how do we respond mr president and i have been going around for two years saying we will not stand for terrorism i don't believe any secretary of state has ever said so directly what our response would be retaliate swiftly massively immediately i know how you feel harold we all feel it bernie what about the cia the pattern is the same as the Marine barracks and the embassy bombings in Beirut. Looks to the agency like Shiite terrorists. And we know their power base is in Iran. Oh, come on, Bernie. We can't send in the military to attack some group you think might have done it. Andrew, let's be realistic. This is precisely their style. And if we don't move in and wipe out the source now, this is never going to stop. We all know there's no military solution to terrorism. It's self-defeating. And the Defense Department is not going to get into a tit-for-tat with Iran. The Ayatollah can endure punishment far better than we can. The Israelis have shown that the best deterrent is swift retaliation. Their selective assassination after the Olympic massacre sent a very clear message. If it was so damn effective, Harold, how come they had to invade Lebanon? John, what do you think? Mr. President, as far as the FBI is concerned, this is a criminal investigation. So far, there is no evidence pinpointing any government or any organization. At this point, we can't even rule out the possibility that these terrorists are Americans. Oh, well, whoever they are, we can hardly stand by and let them victimize the American people. Mr. President, we will find them and we will stop them. But the reality is it may take some time. The American people are tired of waiting. They killed our Marines in 83. They bombed the embassy in Beirut in 83 and 84. They hijacked the TWA plane in 85. How many empty promises of retaliation are we going to make? Mr. President, if we move too quickly, we may do something we will all regret. Remember, we retaliate, they escalate. Nobody's going to do anything crazy. We'll proceed in a rational manner. We're going to bury our dead and we're not going to panic. But I'll tell you something. In the privacy, and I do mean privacy of this room, we've endured terrorists' assaults and humiliation long enough. If there is any evidence that this terrible incident was directed from abroad, I am going to act. If they've declared war on us, that's what those bozos are going to get back. Thank you, gentlemen. Gentlemen, um... I'm sure I don't have to remind you that this crisis requires unified support for the president. No question. Mr. President, I'm just starting to conduct an investigation. They've already delivered the verdict. Watch myself, John. When Swan and Hughes want something, they know how to get it. I hear you, Andrew. But I don't intend to let politics interfere with what I have to do. Maybe you're going to have to. I tell the nation I got nothing to go on. Well, the consensus is definitely moving towards Middle Eastern terrorists. If it is Iran, we should know soon. You know, it doesn't seem to matter to uh, the CIA and the Secretary of State who actually did this. It matters to the American people, Mr. President. They still have it in for the Ayatollah. This could be a good time to settle that debt. No, 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 no. 
John Gary is right. To strike blindly would be the worst mistake of this administration. Look, you stay on top of state and FBI. Harold has a lot more experience at this game than John. I want facts, Jeffrey, facts. You're to stay with this and nothing else till it's over. Mr. President. If you're sitting there wondering why in the world a guy would take his truck to the country club, then I guess you just don't know about this Mazda Cab Plus. The more time I spend around it, the more it just plain knocks me out. Good morning, Mr. Garner. Good morning. When the old clubs aren't back here, there's actually room for two adults facing forward just like real people. Hey, I don't know how Mazda makes it so roomy and quiet and so much fun to drive and still so much lower priced than the rest. But I'll tell you one thing, it might just be the best drive I have all day. Hamburgers are like trains. At some places, the hamburger makes several stops. First in a box, then under the heat lamp, and finally in the holding bin. That's the local hamburger. At Wendy's, your hamburger goes straight to you while it's fresh. So why take the local hamburger when you can get a Wendy's Express? Hot stuff. You know where to get all these steaming hot stuff baked potatoes. Hot so hot. You get them at Wendy's. From folks stand proud and tall You know they're always sincere It's where you were, did you were A friend's a friend That Miller's the beer Miller's made the American way Born and brewed in the USA Miller beer contains no additives, no preservatives Miller's made the American way Thanks a lot, Citibank you had to make your Visa and MasterCard better than other banks. Just by using them, we earn bonuses called City Dollars. And they could have saved us up to 40% on a color TV or a stereo. But we used ours to get something strictly for Vincent's amusement. <laughs> oh, isn't it wonderful? <laughs> Citibank's Visa and MasterCard. It's Citibank that makes them better. Understand it's not a lot of time, but he's got to finish it by the morning. Dan, what are you doing here? You heard anything about Peter? Oh, I'm sure Peter's all right. He's uh, he's away on leave. He left yesterday for a couple of days to show. Oh, good. I don't know how many of his buddies are as lucky as he is. We got to get these guys, sir. Casualty list every 10 minutes. Isolate the name Peter Murphy on the computer. Any information on him comes directly to me. Yes, sir. Stay on top of it, please. He's Agent Dan Murphy's kid. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Our base at the Oval Office. The CIA wants to nail Iran and states real anxious for the president to make a move. You think Sloan will be a problem? 
it sure ain't gonna be the solution. The problem is time. We don't have any. How are we doing? Well, our mobile lab has confirmed it was TNT. From the size of the crater, they've estimated over 1,500 pounds. What's the military say about explosive thefts? <laughs> they got a tough enough time to keep an A-bomb count straight, much less the little stuff. It's the little stuff that scares me. Civilian explosives stolen so far this year total 33,800 pounds. Oh, great. <clears throat> the nuts can play Fourth of July every day of the year. What about eyewitnesses? Soldiers say it was a military truck driven by a woman. A woman? <laughs> Organize a special team, find whatever remains of that truck. There's a printout of all the people claiming responsibility for the bombing. Yep. And they're all here. Neo-Nazis, someone claiming to be Benito Mussolini. We have no choice. Keep checking. There's a list of all those terrorists known to be in this country. I got a copy that's going out to all agencies. Go higher if you have. Let's check out all motels within a 25-mile radius. Who stayed, who checked out, and I want to increase surveillance on all names associated with Red Stripe. You think we, we should run this through the special course under the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act? It's a national security alert. They won't give you any problem. The director's here right now. Thank you. Sir, they just evacuated the World Trade Center. They've got a bomb threat. The New York head office is into it. It's the third one. The nuts are starting to come out of the woodwork. It's going to be a lot more. <clears throat> it's going to put a lot of pressure on us, but we're going to have to take all of them seriously. Well, <clears throat> looks like a Chinese takeout or pizza night. Each time we splintered into a new cell, revolutionary purity was lost. Traitors and compromisers took over the new factions. That was the end of revolutionary kinship. That was when I took the name Abu Ladin. There are few of the fighters left. The rest have become dogs in an imperialist kennel, running first to the Soviets and then to the Americans, wearing a path of shame over their ancestors' graves. I don't think the few of us can change the world. But we can make America suffer. Fort Bladensburg is the first lesson. We have more to teach. There is nothing you can do but learn. Arabic with a French accent. Probably spoke French first. But we can make America suffer. Fort Bladensburg is the first lesson. We have more to teach. There is nothing you can do but learn. I've isolated a couple of key phrases. Yes, yes. Traitors, factions, kinship, the Soviets, the Americans. Graves suffer, teach. With a British accent? Yes. It's obvious you get British teachers. It's not something you can pick up on the streets. I'm sure he lived in England. What do you think, Dan? He recorded overseas? I can't say. But I've separated the voice from the background sound. Listen to this. Well, 
What's the pounding sound? I'm not sure. I'm waiting for a similarities analysis right now. That ought to give us some answers. What's psychoanalysis say? It could be the real thing. He fits the profile. All right. Notify all divisions. Let's proceed as if this Abu Ladin is our man. Send a copy of the tape over to the White House. Call Jeffrey Wagan, see if we can't set up a meeting this morning with the president. I don't think the few of us can change the world. But we can make America suffer. As our coverage of the disaster continues, we now replay a tape recorded last night just hours after the bombing. Veteran anchor man John Pace was there to put this horrible act into perspective. John is retired and living in Bladensburg. During World War II, I flew over Dresden after the firebombing. Later, I was at Dachau, and I saw the miracle there as the dead came to life and walked out into the sun. In Korea, I saw the shells demolish a hospital ward by ward. In Vietnam, a Marine died in my arms. But I was already an old man, and I knew then for the first time that I would not die in war because wars do not kill old men. Last year, I was in El Salvador watching the bulldozers uncover the secret dead, and I made the decision to quit my work, which has been journalism. Well, I, I came to believe that perhaps one man was not meant to see the callousness and cruelty of so many other men. So I retired, came here to the quiet village of Bladensburg. An hour ago, I walked from my home into another country. You will not Morning, recognize sir. them now as your John. sons. They have been blown to bits, assassinated, murdered. They were the innocents, and they have been slaughtered. I don't know. I'm no longer a journalist, no longer in the arena. I cannot fight. I can only, only mourn that someone must fight. He sounds like the voice of God speaking through General MacArthur. They ought to know that sort of thing doesn't help one bit. That's exactly the kind of publicity those pushers want. And they're certainly getting it. Sir, have you had a chance to listen to the tape? Yeah, who is this Abu Ladin character? Anyway, where does he come from? We think he's Algerian. The message was phoned in from a phone booth in New York City. It's a third generation tape. It could have been recorded anywhere in the world. We're not even sure he's in the United States. I don't like this. We have more to teach. You can do nothing but learn. I'm telling you, America's not going to be intimidated by some terrorist martyrs. CIA could be right. He may be working for Iran. God knows they're committed to a doctrine of ideological terrorism. Well, I'm not so sure. He speaks of revolutionary purity and new factions. He could be supported by anyone. The Soviets, the Syrians, the Libyans. We just don't know, sir. I think it's Iran. Well, whoever he is, I don't want him getting by us again. He's not going to kill any more Americans. Damn it. I want you to find this Abu Ladin. I'm giving you 48 hours. Do what you have to, John, but find him fast. The teaching continues. Our weapons may cost only $18 or 92 cents. Simple equipment. And our operation is virtually cost free. The uniform of the gorilla is the color of his enemy. Yes, America is strong and I am weak. I have no navy, no jets, no nuclear weapons. But the weak will inflict the biggest wounds on America. More blood must be spilled as Americans will fall from the sky.
step back through and try it again. Thank you, sir. One from Los Angeles, one from Chicago. What's happening to security in this country, John? The third was the DC shuttle flight. From Boston. No. Not even mouthwash can freshen your breath better than when you're enjoying dead tea. Wash your breath with dead tea. This bug's for all that you do. You keep America going. You keep the juices flowing. You are the muscle, the hope and the hustle. You keep the country growing. Beachwood Age for that clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. This part's for you. NBC Sunday Night at the Movies will return following these messages. His struggle. Her love. The fight for their future. 
Richard Gere and Deborah Winger, an officer and a gentleman, tomorrow. Today is going to South America. First stop, Rio, for Carnival. We'll take you to the mysterious Amazon, look at voodoo and the gauchos of Argentina. A special week of today in South America, starting Monday. Pepsi was born right here in the Carolinas, a winner from the start. Now Pepsi wants to make you a born winner of this. A Chevy Cavalier Z24, one of eight to be given away here in the Carolinas as first prizes in the Pepsi Born Winner sweepstakes. And 8,000 special Pepsi Born Winner baseball shirts will be given away too. Enter today at participating stores. I don't begrudge doctors making good money. They work hard, but I work hard too, just to make ends meet. So it's tough keeping up with health care costs. But well, now there's a program they call CostWise, Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Doctors who sign up for CostWise agree to accept the amounts Blue Cross and Blue Shield allows for treatments. Better believe my doctor is a CostWise doctor. I can't afford for him not to be. TP6, WECT, Wilmington. Under Siege continues. Starring Peter Strauss, Victoria Tennant, Hal Holbrook, and E.G. Marshall. Plane. Yeah, it was the shuttle to New York, not Washington. Yes. Mr. Gary, it's your wife. Yes, put her through. John? Are you okay? I'm fine, just a little shaken. Oh, John, it was awful. The plane was full. It hardly got off the ground when there was this awful explosion. What's going on? I don't want you to fly. Take the train home. Don't be silly. The train takes forever. The airport shut down now, but they say flights will probably resume in a couple of hours. All right, then. Call Barbara and tell her what flight you're taking. Okay. What about Peter? Uh, apparently he's safe. He's on leave. Oh, thank God. Thank God you're safe. If anything happened to you... I'm fine. I'll be home soon. I love you. I'll see you soon. She's okay. Army intelligence supplemented with CIA findings show a large terrorist training center within reach of our 16-inch guns. We can be on them within the hour. Are you certain? Within less than one hour. No, I mean, are you certain we got the right terrorists? Mr. President, you have my report. Our photo and satellite reconnaissance is the best we've ever had. Our men in Iran have confirmed the location. How many civilian dead would you predict, General? We're talking about pinpointed targets here. How many civilian dead? How many women and children? Minimal, sir. Minimal? Fewer than died at Fort Bladensburg.
Do you have an identification with a photo? Uh, driver's license or passport? What is the crap shop? Who's needing passport to pick up their kids? Give me no passport. I don't know. What the? I'm not moving, sir. No, sir. Come on, man. What's the matter with you? Come over here. I'm so glad you're all right. I'm sorry I'm late. Can you believe what's going on? You didn't have to come with all this. Yes, I did. I needed to talk. What's wrong? I can't locate Peter. I've called every hotel and motel along the Maryland shore. That's where he's supposed to be. He's not registered anywhere. Kathy, he's he's 18 years old. He's a serviceman on leave. He could be anywhere. With friends or a girl. I'm absolutely certain he never left the base. What does Dan say? Oh, he thinks I'm nuts. I'm sorry, your luggage has to be cleared first. But I'm leaving Your you. luggage has to be cleared first. They cordoned off a 10-block area around the White House. The whole town's a mess. It's going to take some time to get through. God, what is this? These checkpoints are all over the place. Hard to believe this is Washington. Could be South America. How are these terrorists happening? All these soldiers and guns. Still we're vulnerable. This is exactly what they want. It's as if they've already won. to John about that adoption lawyer I mentioned to you? Well, I started to. It's when all this madness began. Don't give up, Gloria. I hate to see you miss the experience of being a mom. Thinking about Peter all day as a baby. Do you remember his first day in kindergarten when he ate all the blue crayons and every other... Not the blue, the orange. Oh, right! The orange. <laughs> <laughs> the next day he graduated the blue. I'm sure he's okay, Kathy.
coming down. Ten years ago, Xerox invented a technology that changed printing forever. Lasography. Producing razor-sharp images at incredible speed, the laser printer was destined to be on every desk in America. <clears throat> there was, however, one minor drawback. <laughs> so Xerox developed the 4045 Laser CP. And again, razor-sharp images, remarkable speed, and it doesn't look ridiculous sitting on your desk. For laser-sharp documents, call Team Xerox. leather basketball shoes free when you buy 10 rolls or more of any Owens Corning Pink insulation. So insulate now and save on your heating bills. It is an automotive advance whose time has come. The Mercedes-Benz Supplemental Restraint System, SRS. In a severe frontal impact, a driver's side airbag and emergency tensioning retractors in both front seat belts supplement three-point seat belt restraint all in a fraction of a second. SRS, only from Mercedes-Benz. And now standard equipment on every Mercedes-Benz for 1986. Tuesday on Riptide, say hello. How do you do? To some bang up high flying action when the Riptide guys take on a Hawaiian hitman. Pineapple Pete. And on Remington Steel, what does a cold-blooded murder, a sizzling seductress, and soggy spaghetti all have in common? What's life without a little mystery? Tuesday. Experience. He had experience enough to break up organized crimes, cocaine traffic in the Midwest. Now, just because he was a great chief of police doesn't mean he can run the FBI, particularly in situations like this. <laughs> on behalf of the uh, Senate Select Committee on Counterterrorism, I'd like to thank you for coming to this closed-door hearing and volunteering your valuable time to answer our questions, Mr. Gary. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Senators. Before I answer any of your questions, I would like to read the following statement. The FBI is the lead agency in this investigation at the direction of the President, with full cooperation from other departments and agencies of the government. Our highest obligation is the security of this nation. We intend to keep that obligation by finding out who is behind these heinous acts of terror. Many of the American people are frightened. My office is filled with telegrams from people who are afraid to fly. How is it possible with all the vast resources at your disposal, these terrorists have managed to slip by you two times? With all due respect, this is not a police state, Mr. Chairman. The FBI has managed to stop over 22 terrorist plots in the last six months alone including the conspiracy to plant several car bombs in the underground parking structure of the Pentagon. And, Senators, I needn't remind you what would have happened had those terrorists succeeded.
Mr. Gary, for the families of the victims of the last few days, that is not good enough. I can't believe the FBI has no idea who's responsible for these bombings. It would be premature for me to comment on that, Senator. Well, tell me, Mr. Gary, would it be premature for you to explain to us how you intend to protect us from any further attacks? All we can do is employ methods that will minimize the threat to the American people. We are working with customs and immigration to further tighten this country's ports of entry. Beyond that, there are a lot of things we could do, but none of them are legal in this country. Like what, Mr. Director? Well, Senator, everyone is pointing the finger at the Iranians. We could just round all of them up and put them in detention centers like we did with the Japanese during World War II, but I know you wouldn't recommend that, Mr. Chairman. Now, you seem to be the only person in Washington who has no idea who is responsible for these brutal acts. Now, I might ask why that is, Mr. Gary. Mr. Chairman, I appreciate the political challenges of terrorism. However, my role can only be in determining the facts. And Mr. Chairman, at this moment, the facts are we have no concrete proof who is behind these acts of terror. I'll tell you something. The country that did this to us under the cover of terrorism has made a terrible mistake. Now, these bombings are no different than Pearl Harbor. It's a declaration of a new kind of war. the level of absurdity. <laughs> You're the one who's always on my case about controlling my temper. I also told you never trust white people. <laughs> flawless-looking skin for film stars like Vivian Lee. Today, Max Factor's genius goes on with light and natural. Max Factor's first water-based makeup with a biocollagen complex. It covers imperfections and gives you a finish this flawless, this natural. With light and natural, the glamour goes on. Thanks, Max. Try a travel size light and natural. Look for this Max Factor display. Who says you can't have 100% imported hops and a less filling beer? Only rule aging and a less filling beer. Smooth, super premium taste and a less filling beer. Michelob Light, the best of both worlds. Michelob Light, oh yes you can. Have it all. Hamburger places serve lots of stuff. Burgers, 
fish to sour, even sugar. But with so much stuff, it's hard to do everything right. That's why at Kentucky Fried Chicken, all we do is chicken. Whether you choose the Colonel's Original Recipe Chicken, Crunchy Extra Crispy, or Kentucky Nuggets. For great tasting chicken, come to the chicken experts. Any other chicken may not be what it's cracked up to be. Kentucky Fried Chicken, we do chicken right. They need him to get away with murder. He's Raleigh Tyler, master of make-believe. We want to stage a fake assassination, Raleigh. But they're setting him up as the killer. You were the bank. He'll need every trick from every movie he's ever made. What are you, Tyler? Just to get even and get out alive. Forget why I hired me. It's more than real. It's FX. Rated R. Now playing at theaters everywhere. Check newspapers for showtimes. NBC Sunday Night at the Movies will return following these messages. Wednesday on Highway to Heaven, Ed Asner's a rebellious angel. You're wrong! I don't love you anymore! Can he be trusted with the mission of a lifetime? And on Black's Magic, a friendly town vanishes overnight. Tell me I'm not seeing this. Can they find the secret before it finds them? I hope you've got a plan. Wednesday. This is NBC News Digest. Here is John Dancy, NBC News. Good evening. 30 computer operators at the National Election Center in Manila walked off the job today, charging Marcos supporters are tampering with vote totals. The head of a U.S. observer team, Senator Richard Lugar, says American military and economic support will not be possible for the Marcos government if the fraud is left unchecked. The Space Shuttle Commission has asked NASA for documents on problems with the shuttle's boosters. This after the New York Times reported documents warned of problems last July. Now, this. The law requires all manufacturers to drive their cars into walls. At Audi, we also concentrate on going around them. Audi, the art of engineering. South African black leader Winnie Mandela says she has been told her husband, Nelson, is to be released from prison. I'm John Dancy in Washington. More news later on this NBC. Where in the world can you get 7.9% annual percentage rate? Well, right now at Eastern Carolina's preferred Pontiac dealers, Bob King, Wilmington, and Bryan in Fayetteville. It's a fact. Get double savings with big discounts plus 7.9% financing on the economical Sunbird, the luxurious Bonneville, a sporty Grand Prix, or the Pontiac 6000 four-cylinder, even the exciting new Fiero. But don't miss this golden opportunity to save big only at Eastern Carolina's high-volume big discount dealers, Bryan Pontiac Cadillac Fayetteville and Bob King Pontiac Mercedes Wilmington. Nobody, but nobody makes a lettuce and tomato hamburger like McDonald's new McDLT. McDLT, made fresh for you. It's the hot, hot. And the cool, cool. Because McDonald's did what no one else could do. They keep the hot, hot. And the cool, cool. The beef stays hot, the cool stays crisp. It's the hottest taste, the coolest dish. Could be the best lettuce and tomato hamburger ever. It's a good time. Hot beef and McD. What a great taste. Cool, crisp, LT. TV6, WECT, Wilmington. Starring Peter Strauss, Victoria Tennant, Hal Holbrook, and E.G. Marshall.
Comigo. Drop the gun, and you won't get hurt. Drop it! Now don't move. Don't do this.
Kellogg's Special K Breakfast. Low fat, less than 220 calories. Try it on. You'll like what you see. Thanks to the K, you can't it. Goldie's team, the Wildcats. What they lack in skill, they make up for. You're in training as of right now. Put that out. With nerve. Your mama said you ugly. Hey! Hey, how did your folks let you get like this? He probably ate his folks. You make this point and every girl in the free world will want you. Goldie Hawn tackles the impossible. Are you sure I'm the right person for this job? Wildcats. Rated R. Starts Friday, February 14th at a theater near you. Banana trees don't make NutraSweet. Neither do cows, but they might as well. If you've had bananas and milk, you've eaten what's in NutraSweet. Everything in it you find naturally and good things to eat, like two building blocks of protein. Nature doesn't make NutraSweet, but NutraSweet couldn't be made without it. NutraSweet brand sweetener. Just look for the swirl. Tomorrow, it was his last chance to prove his own courage. And kick me out of here, but I ain't quitting. His last chance to win this girl's heart. I've loved you since I met you. His last chance to earn this man's respect. You ready to quit now? No, sir! His struggle. Her love. <laughs> the fight for their future. Richard Gere, Deborah Winger, and Oscar winner Lou Gossett Jr. star in the network television premiere, An Officer and a Gentleman, tomorrow. It started as a game using the most powerful weapon on Earth. Coming, I can feel it. A simple game that could ignite World War III. You're not getting me up there! Because something is driving these men crazy. System is on. And now it's too late unless one man reveals the truth. Stop! It's only a drill! A three-hour world movie premiere starring Robert Conrad, David Soule, and Sam Watterson. Fire. The fate of the world hangs in the balance. The fifth missile, two weeks from tonight. of a door panel from the truck. There was a hand inside. We hope to identify that terrorist within a few hours. But how is that going to stop this Abu Ladin? It's a start, sir. They bombed the Capitol for crying out loud. I don't like it. And the public likes it less. I, I can't sit still any longer. Listen, John. I made you FBI director because I believed in you. You made me proud of you. The way you chased that SOB. But we can't stop here. We got to move on this. I want this nightmare off our backs. <laughs> Gentlemen. I am not happy when the press calls me an indecisive president. Mr. President, the American people are waiting for you to retaliate. The Iranian allies are saying to me privately that these incidents were directed out of Tehran. Olivia's Gaddafi is passing the word. Gaddafi uh, himself is trying to get off the hook, trying to tell us he is not involved. Uh. Iran is being isolated like it has the plague. This only proves one thing, that the Ayatollah is involved in these incidents. Harold, once again, it sounds to me like you're drawing conclusions based on international rumors. John, I'm getting a little tired of you. Now, what the hell does the FBI know about international politics? I agree. You've been pushing against retaliation since day one. Well, I... We have the perfect opportunity in front of us to go in and clean out these terrorist camps. What's the use in being the strongest military power in the world if we're afraid to use it? Being afraid has nothing to do with it. Sure, we could send over some A-10s, some B-52s, and just bomb the hell out of them. But let me tell you this. There'll be more than just terrorists lying dead. There'll also be charred babies, and all the networks will be there. Now, Mr. President, are you willing to take that risk? 
Military force is the only way to deal with people who are fundamentally killers. A gentleman doing nothing, you know, is a decision that guarantees we'll be attacked again. Mr. President, remember Jimmy Carter and what doing nothing in Tehran did to his Carl, president. Carl, 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 you've made your point. I'm hardly going to wait over 300 days to make my move. Our posture in the world has got to be strong if we're going to eliminate terrorism once and for all. Harold, if you retaliate in Tehran, it'll open a floodgate of fanatics seeking vengeance in our backyard. You'll get what you want, but I'm going to have to clean up your mess. If you feel you can't protect the American people, maybe that's something we should discuss. I'm not even going to dignify that with an answer. That's totally unjustified. John can hardly be held responsible for the vulnerability of a democratic society. But if we do what Harold wants to do, we run the risk of engaging in tactics that will destroy what we are. Yes, well, gentlemen, this isn't getting us anywhere. Jeffrey, the purpose of this meeting is to voice our opinion. Oh, Harold, no, I, I don't see what I want to ask you The something. most powerful nation on earth has been brought to this. While you guys squabble, I'm in the White House hiding behind barricades. Maybe the only way to fight terrorism is to become terrorists ourselves. Here, here. Mrs. Sloan. Gloria. Well, I'm surprised to see you. I came to see Mrs. Murphy. Oh, Kathy's my best friend. She's in the garden. Won't you come in? Thank you. Who was it, Gloria? Kathy. This is Margaret Sloan, wife of the Secretary of State. I, I hope I'm not disturbing you. I the house three times. Now I'm in the garden. I wanted to come by when Harold told me about your son. Well, it's very nice of you to take the time. Oh, there's nothing more terrible than losing a child. He was only 18. It makes no sense. This was Harry. He was our oldest. 22. We lost him in Vietnam in 1964. Would you like to see a picture of Peter? Oh, I'd like that very much. I'll be right back. What consoled me was the realization that he gave his life for his country. He died a hero. But Kathy's son wasn't at war. But you and John don't realize that this is a form of war. We need to go after them. Yes, but first we must be absolutely certain who they are. If you had a son, you would understand. This was taken at Peter's high school graduation. When will all this hatred end? When our honor is restored. Harold knows what you are going through. He's going to get the ones who did this to you. I am so sorry about your boy. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Sloan. It was good of you to come by. Gloria, your husband has been too cautious. And this caution is slowing everything up. What can be gained by it, my dear? More people will die. Goodbye. Damn it, Bernie. The whole world is 
watching while the Capitol goes up in smoke. What the hell's next? The White House? Uh, Mr. President, uh, I think the CIA could be of great assistance in this matter, but as you know, we can't legally operate in the U.S. anymore. Well, these are extraordinary times, Bertie. For instance, have you been briefed on the IRT? It's a very mobile, very elite unit formed from the remnants of the Phoenix counter-terrorist teams used so effectively in Vietnam. They could be very useful. Tell me more. Sir, the, uh, the international response team, their mission is interceptive counter-terrorism. Of course, they've never been tasked in the United States. What are you suggesting? The IRT knows how to deal with terrorists. We've used them before in the Middle East. They're lethal. They move quickly. They move effectively. They'll find your targets. Bernie may be right. There should be a backup to the FBI. Well, it would be good to have some other options. Do what you have to do. Mr. President. There's got to be more information than we're getting from that rinky-dink FBI press center. But where is it? We're getting hang-ups all over town. They're working, Warren. After all those expense account lunches, it seems to me that somebody should have a friend in the administration who could come through in a pinch. They're all in hiding. You're damn right they are, and I'll tell you why. They're going to pull another Grenada. They're going to retaliate against somebody and then tell us when it's all over. It's Warren Richards. Is he there? I know. I know. Tell him it's Warren Richards. John, I'm calling myself. I've never done it before, but I'm doing it now. You can call it guidance or background material, whatever you like. Can't tell me or won't tell me, John. Okay, great. I'll go to your official press center. But you know what I think, John? I think it stinks. Well, not as sorry as I am, old buddy. Smith found out that Hughes had a private meeting with the president. That's not all. John Gary is dead set against retaliation. He is in total disagreement with the State Department and the CIA. Central Intelligence Agency, Director's Office. Beatrice, it's Warren Richards. Can you put me through to him? Mr. Hughes is at the health club, Mr. Richards. Thank you. Eric? I'm going to take a steam. Warren, I, there isn't much information we can give you. Believe me, we all like to know who's behind this. Well, you had a private meeting with the president. Can we talk about that? Oh. <laughs> Sorry, Warren, I, I, I can't comment on that meeting. What about yesterday's meeting? Did the president talk about retaliation? Well, this is an FBI case. I mean, I would go to John Gary. I'd ask him for his response. I've already talked to John. I'd like to know what your take was on that meeting. Oh, the Secretary of State said repeatedly that we can't be expected to sit still and let ourselves be attacked. My position hasn't changed. Look, we can agree this scenario is right out of the Middle East, specifically Iran, right? No, that's, uh, that's, the, uh, that's the majority view. Except for Gary, huh? Well, I'll check with Gary on that. So can we agree that John Gary's dissension is slowing down the president's decision to retaliate against Iran? It's got very hot in here, Warren. I think I know. Oh, 
coast is clear. Nobody's here. Just me. Snuggle fabric softening. I get clothes snuggly soft and mm, cuddle up fresh. You'll see. Snuggle fabric softener. Snuggly softness that's really less expensive. I'm staying with the Sketty. Uh-oh. Um, we'll get that stain out. A-L-L? How's it work? All goes straight to the stain to lift it away. <gasps> no more pastel. Uh -huh. Lift stains away with concentrated A-L-L. Soap made my face feel very tight and dry. Like if I smiled, my face would crack. With Dove, my face felt soft. Even my dimples. We asked women across America to give up their ordinary soap and take the Dove seven-day test. Dove makes my skin feel the way it should. Not dry at all, but soft and supple. It feels great. Dove is one quarter moisturizing cream. It doesn't dry your face like soap. My skin needs cleansing and it needs moisturizing. My skin needs Dove. Dove is better than soap. You can feel it in your skin. Sometime soon, this man could walk into your life and make you a millionaire. It's this man is Herb. Now that Herb loves the Whopper, he's visiting a Burger King in every state. The first person to spot Herb in each restaurant wins $5,000, and everybody there gets a chance at a million. I did it. I found Herb, and I won $5,000. Oh, and a chance at a million, too. Awesome. Spot Herb at your Burger King. Gary Saratsky found me. You could be next. It began as a vision. America, you'll never be over the hill. It's the FBI computer analysis of the Port Bladensburg bombings. It computes the similarities of all the other attacks on fire. It says it's 95% sure the Iranians did it. Smart top secret, how'd you get it? You ready for this? It was sitting on my desk. You don't know who left it there? No. But it was obviously somebody who wanted us to find this out. And I don't see anything about this till I verify it. Well, that's all you're getting, gentlemen, so you'll have to base your investigation on that evidence. Hello. John, it's Warren. I really need to talk to you. What about? I've got a document from your office. Oh, look, Warren, I don't care what documents you've got, but I'm not conducting my investigation in the pages of your damn newspaper. some company oh would you like to be by yourself sure sit down then there's nothing real about it you know death there's nothing real about it Nothing about me really thinks he's dead. And when I try to make it real, then, then something in my mind makes me stop thinking that way, and I, as if having the thought will actually make it happen. I keep looking for meaning. All day yesterday, I. I wandered around the house, trying to find some clue. There's nothing there. Yeah, I know. My father died when I was nine. I used to sit in the car, in the, in the center of the bench seat, and I'd wait for him to come and start it. We had some of our best talks in that car. And I knew if I sat there long enough, he'd come and start it.
old's your son, Nick? Three months. <laughs> Babies have an amazing strength. Babies don't know anything. But they want to live. The will to live. Peter had it. But they wouldn't let him. outside? I watched it for a minute before I came in. It looked like it was going to turn nasty. Well, it did. One of the Iranian demonstrators tried to escape in my cab. He was being beaten. They're in for a tough time. Warren, we can't just walk around the streets clubbing people because they look like they come from the Middle East. I don't think this is just happening in Washington. We've got stories like this coming in over the wire from all over the country. What is going on? America's never been attacked at home before. People are turning ugly. They want action. Gloria, John has got to appear to be more decisive. I've never known John be anything but decisive. Look, Gloria, you know how much I admire John. I think he's a hell of a guy. But he has moved up very fast, maybe too fast. And what does that mean? Uh, he doesn't really know how Washington works. He's not seasoned. What's he doing wrong? He's not playing the game. Is John in trouble? He's isolating himself. Can't you help? You're his friend. He won't let me help. He won't even talk to me. Here. Look at this. How did you get this? It was left on my desk by somebody who obviously wants to hurt John. It is almost proof positive of who's behind these attacks and that John is afraid to be the one to point the finger. How can I help? 
get him to talk to me. I'm looking for Samantha Darcy. We're closed, ma'am. Samantha Darcy. But, but, yes. but. I am someone for Darcy. I found your wallet in the street. Oh, yes. Yes, I thought I recognized you. You are the lady who tried to help me. I am sorry if I hurt you. I'm the one who's sorry for the ignorance of those men. What happened to your store? My store is an easy target for the frustrations of the people. The prejudice of some makes us all the same. Must be hard for you and your family to live with this. We came here for freedom. My family was westernized, so it was very dangerous for us to live in Tehran. My sister, a beautiful young woman, was caught wearing lipstick by the past Tehran. They are the secret police of Ayatollah. They cut up her lips with a razor. We came here to escape the barbarians of my country. We fled to the humanity of America. But now it seems America too has its barbarians. I don't think the Americans are barbarians. I think they're just... They're just afraid. You are a very kind lady. I thank you. Greta Klaus, born in Stuttgart, Germany, 1960. A member of the Bader Meinhof gang, accused of the kidnap murder of French journalist Philippe Bordeaux, June 1978. March 1979, escaped Stuttgart prison. Whereabouts unknown. This tape was sent to us from Interpol. It shows Greta and Andreas Bader. He was responsible for the bombing of the 5th Army headquarters in Germany, 1972. Well, it can't be Bader. He killed himself in Steinheim prison in 1977. Put the others up on the screen. Germany, Iran, Lebanon. There's got to be a connection here. Family, training, ideology, something. What have you got about religious background? Well, Klaus was raised Protestant, and Tahan is Lebanese Catholic. Oman is Muslim. Only one is a Muslim. Well, that certainly puts a damper on the theory it's the Iranians. I've never known them to use anyone but their own people. Call Jeffrey Wiggins. Tell him I want to see the president right away. that the president decided to have this reception shows the world that civilization still does go on yes <laughs> Will you excuse me <laughs> three of the terrorists, sir. Thanks for the update, John. The president wants to be kept very current, as you know. Um, let me try to put this delicately. You have a theory as to who didn't attack us. Now, John, the thing that we've got to find out... Yeah, what is it? We've identified three of the terrorists. Good. Who are they? A German woman, a Lebanese woman, and an Iranian man. A German and a Lebanese? Yes, sir. This definitely feels more like an independent group. Well, how soon before you can make your move on this Abu Ladi? That's impossible to predict, Mr. President. Thank you, John. Yes, sir. Good night, sir. Good, Good night. Jeffrey. Well, how much? 
always help. Gary has just identified three of the terrorists. Only one is Iranian. Mr. President, I'll say it again. The point is to send a message. Furthermore, there's enough evidence to substantiate that these terrorists are supported by the Ayatollah. Prove to me that that's true. Harold and I'll make my move. It'll be good to sleep at home for a change and see Gloria. I haven't seen her since she got back. Yeah, I haven't seen my wife in a while either. It's been one hell of a week. You know something? That chase made me feel like I was just a plain old cop again. Yeah. I bet old J. Edgar Hoover never ran his tail off like that chasing down Al Capone. Yeah, well, compared to what we're up against, Al Capone was a piece of cake. I still can't get it out of my head the way that guy killed himself. He didn't even look scared. Before that girl jumped to her death, she looked at me and smiled. <sighs> Reminded me of when I was in Nam. I saw a monk incinerate himself. Strange things, he never cried out. He never budged. Well, the truth is we're naive. I mean, the East and the Middle East, it's a whole different ball game. Those people have their own mentality. They have their own notion of what's right and wrong, what's worth living for and dying for. But we insist on dealing with them as if they're the same as us. We better wake up. Hello? Right here. May I see your ID, please, sir? Come by for me around six, okay? Yeah. Oh, by the way, we've decided to change the date of the christening. Oh, geez, I forgot all about it. That's okay, I understand. It's really not the right time for it. You know what? It's always the right time for something like that. Don't change it. That's an order. Thanks, John. Besides, it'll give me a chance to see my godson again. <laughs> or a kid is strong. You should see his grip. You should see how he holds on to my finger. Yeah, I'll bet. There's nothing like having your baby smile back at you. I guess the older you get, the more special a baby. I'm sorry. Why? That's okay. I haven't told you. We've decided to adopt. That's great. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Thanks. Your note. I've missed you. I missed you too. I was terrified. I thought I could lose you. I like it when you worry about me. <laughs>
This is lovely. Thanks. What's wrong? No, I, mean, I just can't sleep. How's Kathy doing? Not good. Well, I'm not surprised. I'm worried about Dan. He seems to be keeping everything inside. Margaret Sloan was at Kathy's. Oh, great. She made a point of telling me that she thinks you're being too cautious. What does Margaret Sloan know about what I'm doing? What does Margaret Sloan know about anything? She's just the mouthpiece of her damn husband. It's not just Margaret Sloan. Warren took me to lunch. My goodness, everybody's been very busy. He's worried about you. He thinks you're isolating yourself and that you're afraid. I see. What do you think? Not sure. What are you saying? You think we should go in and bomb Iran? I don't know. We have to do something. And what if we're wrong? Well, everyone else is convinced it's the Iran. Well, I'm not! Don't tell me what everybody else thinks. That's all I've been hearing. Everybody's made up their minds already. Oh, damn it! They want to bomb Iran, let them. I don't have to live with it. They do. I'm sorry. You can't always take the responsibility for everything. Well, I'm the man responsible for preventing what is happening now. And nothing I'm doing seems to be working. I wanted to see my son grow up. I wanted to have grandchildren sitting on my knee when I was old. But this was not to be. You cannot meet my demands, for I have none. My only goal is to teach, to educate America what it is to suffer. As so many third world people suffered so many times before. Our Lord has expressly given to little children a place among the people of God, which holy privilege must not be denied them. Remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, Let the children come to me, do not hinder them, for to such belong the kingdom of God. Beloved, do you in presenting this child for this holy sacrament confess your faith in our Lord Jesus Christ? We do. Do you therefore accept as your bounden duty and privilege to live before this child a life that becomes the gospel, to exercise all godly care that he may be brought up in the Christian faith, that he may be taught the Holy Scripture? that he learned to give reverence attendance upon the private and public worship of God. Would you give the child to me, please? In obedience to the church, by the powers invested in me, I christen this child in the name of the Holy Trinity. <laughs> Brothering of the household of faith, I commend to your love and care of this child whom we this day recognize as the member of the family of God. Will you endeavor so to live that he may grow in the knowledge and the love of God the Father through Jesus Christ our Lord? We will. We will. Grandparents, please come forward. What you've done here today is a noble and divine undertaking. You have 
presented this child to be cared and nurtured in Christian fellowship. And I commend him to you on this day. Americans will die. There will be more blood. This is the hijack and south! When there is no hope, no chance, no possibility of escape, Delta Force gets the word. It's a go. Take them down. They're not after adventure or glory. They're fighting to save American lives. You take one of us, you gotta take us all. Chuck Norris, Lee Marvin. The Delta Force, rated R. Starts Friday, February 14th at theaters everywhere. It's happening all over. More and more people are choosing Sprite over 7-Up. Attention all students, it's Wednesday, so don't forget Miss Monaghan's Drama Club. Remember, Saturday's the big Dover Heights game. Oh, yes, since more and more of you are drinking Sprite instead of 7-Up, we've put Sprite in all the machines. Way to go. Move over, 7-Up. Sprite's great lime and taste is winning people over. Great lime and taste makes it Sprite. More than 125 brands of yogurt have come along since Dannon introduced its yogurt back in 1942. But to anyone who truly understands what yogurt is all about, there always has been, and always will be, only one. Dannon is yogurt. No. No, Harry, not tonight. And no TV. Funny, you can get a good night's sleep and still wake up with red, irritated eyes. Looks like another Visine morning, because Visine with tetrahydrazoline gets the red out and refreshes irritated morning eyes so they look and feel great. Morning, Harry. Okay, look me in the eye and tell me you stayed home last night. Harry. All right, I believe you. I was just wondering. Wake up to Visine. It gets the red out. NBC Sunday Night at the Movies will return following these messages. I'm Tom Brokaw in Buenos Aires. The trials and the triumphs of South America reports all this week on NBC Nightly News. This is NBC News Digest. Here is John Dancy, NBC News. Good evening. Both President Marcos and Mrs. Corazon Aquino continue to claim victory in the Philippine election amid widespread indications of vote stealing. Haiti's new military rulers dissolved parliament today. There have been charges of fraud in recent parliamentary elections there. Doctors in Tucson today gave Mrs. Bernadette Shires a second artificial heart after a transplanted human heart failed. And Marilyn Klinghoffer is dead of cancer at age 59. Her husband, Leon, a wheelchair patient, was killed and thrown overboard last fall by the hijackers of the Achille Lauro cruise liner. I'm John Dancy in Washington. More news later on this NBC station. For America, there's something brand new down at Hardee's. Announcing the new quarter pound cheeseburger at Hardee's. It's thick and juicy, and now just 99 cents when you buy fries and any beverage. The thicker, juicier quarter pound cheeseburger. For a limited time, just 99 cents when you buy fries and a beverage. through February 22nd. Get 7.9 plus at your local Carolina Ford dealer. 7.9% annual percentage rate financing on new 85 and 86 V6 Thunderbirds, new Ford Tempos, and new 4 and 5 speed manual transmission Ford Escorts. Plus Ford's new 3-year unlimited mileage powertrain warranty on all 86 Ford cars. Plus 7.9% financing on new 4x2 Ranger and F-150 pickups. See your local Carolina Ford dealer by February 22nd. 
Do you know what the second greatest pleasure in the world is? Find out at the 86 Grand Strand Boat Show and Sail at the Myrtle Beach Convention Center, where summer begins. Al Holbrook and E.G. Marshall. And Mr. President, when you're party chairman, you get bluntness. And these are the people that backed your campaign. They're on your side. But the polls are terrific. 92% support the president. That was yesterday's polls. What about today? Uh, government buildings and airports are one thing. But when you start bombing stores and shopping centers, you're hitting at the heart of the American people. What does George Baines say? Max, I'm just the messenger. I'll tell you what George says. And remember, he is our biggest contributor. He says if Max doesn't do something right now, he can forget about his second term. Forget about it. And if this thing drags on for a month, they'll start trying to impeach him. That's word for word. Does he have any suggestions? No, he just feels that you've got to do something right now. He feels you have no choice. Well, thanks, Stu. You're a good party chairman. I just hope when this thing is over, I have a party to be chairman of. Questions, ma'am, please. You hold Rand responsible for Sir, the death of your son. Sir, could you give alone. me a few minutes, please? Do you feel enough is okay. being done to fight these terrorists? All these young men, go on. When will it end? Let me find the people who did this. John, can we talk for a minute? We're printing a story nailing Iran tomorrow. 
So talk to me. Warren, I got nothing for you. On what basis? We got all the sources and confirmations we need, including a report from your own bureau. That report was a feasibility study. It doesn't carry any weight. It's not meant for publication. Besides that, you shouldn't have the damn thing in the first place. The fact is, I've got it. So go on the record and say all that. Look, Warren, a crime was committed, and I am directing an investigation. The Bureau is doing the same as we would for any investigation. We are gathering evidence, we are sorting out suspects, and when we have the proof, when we have the proof, I will act. That's my responsibility. And my responsibility is to print the truth. I am trying to find out what that is. If you print that story, you're going to kill innocent people. Newspapers don't kill people, John. Now go on the record. Give me a chance to print your side of the story. No, I won't do that. John, as a good friend, I'm telling you, you better play the game because they're out to get you. You are odd man out. You're standing in the way and you're going to get run over. You are the one who's going to be sacrificed. Talk to me, John. We're going to go with the story. And you're going off a cliff. What did Warren want? A story. In the midst of all this unhappiness, he wants a story that pits me against the administration because I don't seem to be playing ball and making things nice and neat like a good political appointee should. You'd think he'd know me better than that by now. He does. He just misjudged you. Like I did the other night. Saliant, born Paris, France, 1955. Occupation, freelance Arabic translator. Married, Kassian Kawan in Paris, 1980. Kassian Kawan, born Tehran, Iran, 1942. Occupation, mathematics professor, University of Tehran. A known supporter of the Ayatollah Khomeini. Oh, Salon's gonna just love that one. <sighs> Kawan's first wife was killed during a military skirmish in Tehran, 1975. A known political radical, Kawan fled the Shah secret police moving to Paris, France. These photos were hidden under their floorboard in the Paris apartment. They're in pretty bad shape. Paris, France, 1981. Kawan married France Elion. That's about it. Have you ID'd the others? No. Why not? Coming at the time. Well, let's make the time now. Can you punch in on the woman? Yeah. Oh, right, you got to enhance that a little bit. see her side by side with the passport photo of Greta Klaus. You got the mugshot? a different color. This may be Abu Ladin. How much force? How much talk? The recent terrorist attacks have forced everyone from political leaders to citizens on the street to consider these questions. 
Are our basic values to be compromised? Good evening, I'm Tom Peterson. Tonight, to shed some light on this question, my guests are Saheed Maktasani, delegate of Iran to the United Nations, and Senator Reuben Harding of Texas, an outspoken foe of terrorism. Senator, why don't we begin with your comments? Well, Tom, I'm astounded the ambassador had the gall to appear here tonight. Now, if you're looking for a terrorist, we've got one right here. I must remind the senator that terrorism was supported by the U.S. government when over 150,000 murders were committed during the Shah's regime. Mr. Mokhtasani, who do you think are supporting these terrorists? There's more than just suspicion that leads to your government. Ah, uh, suspicion. Suspicion could lead us to any number of countries who have felt the heavy boot of American policy. Uh, Lebanon, uh, Panama, Chile, uh, who is to say? Now someone has thrown a stone back and America doesn't like it. Your government has a fanatical hatred of the United States, our people, our way of life. Now you harbor many terrorists and we intend to wipe them out. Now we see it exactly the opposite. We see the American government having a fanatic hatred for our ways because we do not want your violence, drugs, sexual perversions seeping into our country? You say we are fanatics. How many people have you killed in your holy war against democracy? The Iranian people are not responsible for the deaths of Americans. If that were true, how come you have terrorist camps in Iran? Now, the Ayatollah is using religion to cover up military aggression and the enslavement of Senator, his own Senator, you call yourself an enlightened man. One but you are not going to read the world of your own propaganda. Your Gentlemen, please. We're losing connection with the real issue. Are you resident, sir? Yes. Dan, what do you got? Listen to this. The pounding sound is from heavy industrial equipment. It's from some kind of a manufacturing plant located close to where the messages were recorded. Now, I thought this sound came from the factory too, but when I isolated it, the computer identified the sound as three different passing automobiles, and they're all late model American cars. I'm sure they need us in the United States. That's great work, Dan. In a couple of hours, I should be able to ID what the factory makes and get a location. Okay. How did you find me? It was easy. You hid yourself among us. I will not let my people suffer because of you. You are not Iranian. You're becoming soft. You've lived in the world of America too long. A world that takes away the land of our people, mocks our traditions, and makes our children strangers. A world that thinks all Muslims are fanatics. Your way would destroy us all. What would you accomplish if we all perished? There are things more important than our little personal lives. Ah. The people who follow me, they know that. You are crazed with power and vengeance. You exploit the people who follow you. I implore you to stop. In the name of the Iranian people, the Americans are getting ready to attack. Thousands of lives will be lost. I'm not concerned with the business of Iran. I warn you, your cause is not ours. Iranian lives will not be lost because of the fanaticism of a stranger.
your classic cold symptoms, the number one choice of pediatricians and pharmacists is Triaminic Cold Syrup. It's number one to clear up your child's sneezing and runny stuffy nose, as well as your own. So get number one, Triaminic Cold Syrup, exactly what you need. I'm the man who can take you a million miles away, all in one evening. So I don't like my office. Wow. Looks like we still got some setting up to do. Come on, Hal. Let's go get some hot coffee. There's one instant decaffeinated really worth sharing. Maxwell House Instant Decaffeinated Coffee. The only one with enough rich, fresh taste to be called Maxwell House. Well, curtains up. I lost it all. Everything. Jack Casey just landed. Driving a bike and delivering junk, that's for you. In a world where danger is a constant. You can't touch me. Disappear. And survival is an instinct. Dad! Jack Casey's gonna teach the streets a whole new set of rules. Kevin Bacon, Quicksilver, Rated PG. Starts Friday at Select Theaters. Next Sunday, it's two of America's biggest country western stars, Chris Christopherson and Johnny Cash, as Frank and Jesse James. They're wanted dead or alive by the law and the ladies. The most wanted man in America. It's an NBC world premiere movie. One last bank. The last days of Frank and Jesse James. Everyone wants to get robbed by Jesse James. Monday, February 17th. A network television premiere. The girl, the dream, the man she loved. The movie experience that electrified a generation. Flash dance. Sam, he was one of the men at Kwan's wedding. His name's Francois Leclerc. His son was killed in 1981 when a terrorist faction blew up a restaurant in Paris. His son's name was Ladin. Abu Ladin means father of Ladin. He took his son's name. That's what he meant when he said he wanted to see his son grow up, but that was not to be. Do we know who killed his son? According to French intelligence, Shaw's secret police. They were killing Khomeini followers. Police don't create terrorists. Politics do. Send this photo to all our field officers. Notify them all. Check out every Middle Eastern community in the United States. He's got to have a safe house. Thank you, man. Good job. Sounds comfortable? Would you like some coffee or a cigar? My wife hates the smell. <laughs> Why she's always trying to hide them on me. Tomorrow morning, this newspaper will be out for all the world to see bombings traced to Iran. This is an injustice to the Iranian people. Mr. Ambassador, the press is not controlled by the government in this country. Neither the president nor I can stop them from printing the truth. But you can stop them from slaughtering thousands of innocent lives. Iran has nothing to do with these terrorists. The White House knows this, but is using it as an excuse to attack us. People in your country are barbarians, Mr. Moctezani. Persians had a great civilization 3,500 years ago while your people were still living in caves. I'm interested in saving lives. 
the lives of American citizens. Iran has nothing to do with this, but you are not willing to believe it. I need proof, Mr. Ambassador. And so far, you don't have any. Leave us. My people are dying all the time. But there is such a thing as pulling back from destiny. This I do on my own. That is according to my faith, which says that I take orders directly from God. This man did all those things. He is known in my country, but he is an outcast. This will tell you where to find Abu Latin. He is here in the United States. Contact Francois Leclerc. Tell him I have betrayed him. Mr. President. Harold Sloan has located Abu Ladeen. Terrific. Terrific. How? Saeed Mokdasani. Call John Gary. I want to move on this immediately. Mr. President. I don't think that this country can endure a prolonged trial. My fear is the uncertainty of future acts. Think about all the terrorists who will, who will try to free Ladine. Sir, we need to wrap this up quickly. for the international response team on anything beyond standby and the circumstances. I'm an executive liaison. That's clear and unequivocal. Now, Bertie, if the CIA wants out of this for any reason, I want you to tell me now. Negative. CIA isn't out of it. You're running this show, then, Jeffrey. I always complete my laps. Like it to me. How's the Uzi? Pull to the left. Holy smoke. Where? This is not a passport assignment. U.S. of A? Times they are changing. What do you think? 
It's a poor workman who blames his tools. Come on. No, you're at a dead end. Search option five of the master menu. I've just identified the industrial equipment sound. It's about a 30-ton mold press used in automobile plants. Abu Ladin had to have recorded his messages near one. There's a large Shiite population in the Detroit area. Nick, place the SWAT team on standby. Bill, notified Detroit field office. Operation lockdown is now in effect. I want to be able to move in at a moment's notice. Right. Dan? I need an exact address of that auto plant. Now, you got other personnel. Why don't you let them get into it? Sir, I really need to be here. All right, I understand. John! What can I do for you? Jeffrey, I need to speak with the president. Trouble is, he's in with the Joint Chiefs. He asked me to meet with you. Come on and tell me what I can do for you. Look, it's very important. We've identified Abu Ladin. He's definitely French-Algerian. It does not appear Iran was involved at all. Well, the president's going to be very pleased to hear that. Do you know where Ladin is? He's here in the United States. We have reason to suspect the Detroit area. Tell me something. How long is it going to take before you find him? I should have an exact address in a few hours, maybe less. I've placed SWAT on notice. We're ready to move. That's very good. Thanks, John. Look, Jeffrey, this changes the entire picture. Shouldn't I speak with the president? But you are speaking to him, John. Anything you have to say to me, we'll get to the president. Good night, John. He's in Dearborn, Michigan. Field agents on the way. Yeah, so are we head for the airport. Yeah, we're on our way. I don't want some local cowboy messing this up. I need that bastard alive. You do something to me. Real cheese does so much for you because it gets its goodness from fresh, wholesome milk. Something that simply mystifies me. It's one of nature's most concentrated sources of calcium. You do something to me. Make your meal sing with real cheese. That nothing else can do. I want strong sinus medicine, but this has aspirin, this alcohol, this caffeine. I want Dristan. Dristan contains three doctor-recommended medicines for strong sinus cold relief. Without ingredients, I don't want Dristan. I thought this demonstration was just advertising, but Denerex tingles. Tells me it's doing more. Regular head and shoulders, no tingle. Both have dandruff medicine, but Denerex adds an extra anti-itch medicine and conditioner, too. Goodbye, head and shoulders. Hello, Denerex. Hey, Let me know the minute that film comes in. In this business, you can't stop for a headache. I used to take aspirin or Tylenol, but I've switched to Advil. In its first year, doctors have recommended Advil more than 500,000 times. You see, just one Advil is as effective as two regular strength Tylenol or two regular aspirin. That makes sense to me. And Advil didn't upset my stomach. Advil, advanced medicine for pain. The Venice Simplon Orient Express. Naturally, the most luxurious train in the world serves the richest coffee in the world. What's 
c'est impossible Pas de café de Colombie Vite, vite, retournez à Paris 100% Colombian coffee, hand-picked by Juan Valdez. NBC Sunday night at the movies will return following these messages. Tuesday on the 18th. It's poet George! Join it for rockin' and it's stompin'. By George, can the 18th keep up? Tuesday. I'm rollin'. Coming up tonight at 11 on New Center 6, a community-sponsored facility opened in the Port City today, the first of its kind in North Carolina, and the latest news on the battle for the presidency of the Philippines, and today's exclusive report from our sports team in Daytona Beach. Steve? Well, Mike, we're here in Daytona Beach, Florida. Tonight, we'll show you highlights of the Bush Clash. That's all coming up in sports. Stay with us. News, weather, sports, and more in a minute. We're next. Don't go away. To all the great ideas that ever met with skepticism, we humbly add another. True draft beer in a bottle. New Miller Genuine Draft. It's draft beer smooth because it's cold filtered, not heat pasteurized like most bottled beers. <laughs> and they said it couldn't be done. Miller Genuine Draft. Nobody, but nobody makes a lettuce and tomato hamburger like McDonald's new big DLT. McDLT made fresh for you. Just the hot, hot. And the cool, cool. Cause McDonald's did what no one else could do. Let's keep the hot, hot. And the cool, cool. The beef stays hot. The cool stays crisp. It's the hottest taste. The coolest dish. Could be the best lettuce and tomato hamburger ever. It's a good time. Hot beef and McD. What a great taste. Cool, crisp, LT. Madeline Mays of Mays Love Blossoms has just what your sweetheart wants for Valentine's Day. Like roses starting at just $19.99. Visit or call Mays Love Blossoms today. TV6, WECT, Wilmington. Under Siege continues. Starring Peter Strauss, Victoria Tennant, Hal Holbrook, and E.G. Marshall. It's finished, sir. They're ready to go in. Good morning, gentlemen. Nobody gets hurt, understood? But I want this man alive. Yes, sir.
idea. Hold on, they're reporting in. They got it. This is the director. What's your situation inside? Sir, the building is secure and we have him in custody. He was by himself. We found him praying. He seemed to be expecting us, sir. He was by himself, praying. Let's go. Sir, congratulations. Congratulations, gentlemen. United States has exploited the world long enough. It is our turn now. I welcome my arrest. I have much to say to your nation. You have much to say to your God. Freedom is right. so well. What seems like nothing and works so well? New Playtex Slender Regular Tampons, Mom. That is new. It's the most comfortable Slender Regular I've ever tried. With a special Playtex plastic applicator. Way more comfortable than cardboard. And the protection I've been looking for. Try Playtex Tampons or Playtex Deodorant Tampons in new Slender Regular. Seem like nothing. Works so well. I'm convinced.
Presenting 14 savory flavors to shake your craving for salt. Mrs. Dash, 14 herbs and spices so vegetables snap, chicken sizzles. No bitter taste of salt substitutes. Mrs. Dash, instead of salt. New VO5 hairspray is actually good for my hair. It doesn't leave it dry. It truly improves my hair's condition. It doesn't dull or damage. And the more I use it, the better my hair looks and feels. Patented VO5, good for your hair. Stuart, you still up? Uh -huh. Experimenting with another cold's medicine? Oh, it's nighttime, honey. Where's the night cold? I took this, but <coughs> I'm still coughing, aching, fever. But NyQuil relieves your sniffling, sneezing, and stuffy head, plus coughs, aches, and fever. Also, you can rest. Are you resting now? Uh-uh. Oh. NyQuil, the nighttime sniffling, sneezing, coughing, aching, stuffy head fever, so you can rest medicine. From Vicks, of course. Are you anything like my brother Jack? He figured the only way to get into a serious road car was to go empty his bank account and buy something from the Black Forest. But I talked him into driving a Mazda 626. Now he's going around telling everyone he knows about refinements, like the better aerodynamics, the new fuel injection, and the great performance. But the way I figured, I saved old Jack about 7,000 bucks. You think I'll ever see any of it? No way. That's what I thought. Thursday on Hill Street, Varillo is shot. While he clings to life, Joyce remembers their first meeting. Are you okay? I think so. Their very first date. You know, I'd really like to ask you out, but... And the wonderful love they shared. I was just wondering if we should try to get some sleep. Why bother? A very special Hill Street Thursday. your hunch about the cigarette butts found in the warehouse where the shooting occurred. Uh, I'm sorry about Tut, sir. Looks like the drinks are on you guys this time, gentlemen. <laughs> the game's not over yet, Andy. <coughs> My secretary was not supposed to tell anybody where I am. Andrew, I need your help. You guys play on. I'll uh, catch up with you. Okay, Andy. I'll take care of these two guys. <laughs> Let me tell you what my lab reports indicate. I got fabric from a shirt that isn't manufactured in the United States. I got cigarette butts from cigarettes that are manufactured in limited supply in a small town outside of Tehran. All of this is just as it should be. But the cigarette butts are over three days old. They weren't smoked at the site. They were a plant. This is a pretty sophisticated operation, Andrew. And I don't have any more time. I want to know who's behind this. <laughs> I'm in the middle of a golf game here. Andrew. That's, I'm playing one of my very best games. Please, you got to help me. Uh, look, it says here, terrorists kill terrorists. Now, won't you settle for that? No. Uh. Andrew, I lost my friend yesterday. Do you know about the IRT? Yeah, but that's CIA. Do you know what you're saying? No. 
Oh, yes. Are you sure? How far does this go? That's up to you to determine. I want to see the president. I'm sorry, he can't be disturbed. That's what you told me the last time. Tell me, Jeffrey, did you or did you not know about the IRT involvement in yesterday's shootings? Gary, you're in over your head. You bastard. Who the hell do you think you are? I want to see the president right now. Gary, you're in way the hell over your head, Gary. Gary. Gary, hold it. Mr. President, Gary Mr. here is out of control. Oh, John. Oh, John, gosh, I'm so sorry we lost Nick Tutman. Nick Tutman was murdered by the IRT, Mr. President. You don't have all the facts, John. Well, the facts I do have are I arrested a criminal. And while he was in the custody of the FBI, he was assassinated. And I have reason to suspect that the order came from this office. Gary, you are out of line. Uh, Jeffrey, would you excuse John and me for a moment, please? Please. please. He'll be all right, Jeffrey. I'll be in my office if you need me. John, first let me congratulate you. Your entire investigation Did was you brilliant. For authorized the IRT, sir. You just don't understand. We are in a state of war with these terrorists. Did you authorize the IRT, sir? Look at this in the light of national security. There was no choice, no other choice. While that man was alive, even as a prisoner, especially as a prisoner, he would have had tremendous power. He would have rallied every crackpot and terrorist around the globe from the very courtroom that you were going to put him into. More people would have died. It would have been a dreadful circus. Even in war, Americans don't shoot their prisoners, Mr. President. John, I don't understand. What were you trying to accomplish? You kill one terrorist, a hundred will take his place. John, we can't ignore our laws for the sake of expediency. Do you think we have no right to rob ourselves of due process? Don't read the Constitution to me, John. I have an obligation and a duty to defend this country. I have an obligation to defend the law. I did what I thought was right. You uh, did not have the right to execute those men. What you did makes us no different than them. Look. We're both a part of this administration. You did your job. Now let me do mine. For the good of the American people. Sir? John, let's... Put this behind us, put it to sleep.
Teamwork is what built America. And now teamwork has come to American banking. Local savings institutions bringing you banking nationwide, yet keeping decisions close to home. For banking that's powerful and personal, team up with us, the member near you of First Nationwide Network. Today is going to South America. First stop, Rio, for Carnival. We'll take you to the mysterious Amazon, look at voodoo and the gauchos of Argentina. A special week of today in South America, starting Monday. And tomorrow night on an all-new TV's bloopers and practical jokes. The jokes on Mafia Princess Susan Lucci, plus Chicago Super Bowl superstars. Then an NBC Network movie premiere, An Officer and a Gentleman, starring Richard Gere, Deborah Winger, and Louis Gossett, Jr. An Officer and a Gentleman, tomorrow night. a disease that affects millions of people in the world today. A disease so powerful it can destroy not only the ones who have it, but the ones who love them too. You don't have to drink to suffer from alcoholism. The folks at Alabama...